Well, welcome everybody. Can you all hear me? Great. Yes. Great. Might give it one or two more minutes just to make sure that anybody else who's planning to join us is able to be with us. But I will, as a couple of reminders, let you know that tonight is a communion evening. Also, if you, if you have a part of your house where you have a cross being exhibited or you have any candles or you wanna participate in stripping of the altar, you might wanna light a candle that you can then just put out just for the ritual act of putting out a candle. And I'm hoping all of you who wanted soup have some soup and bread or something else that you're able to share with us as a meal. And we are um, gathering basically to worship as we eat together. So this is not, there will be formal parts of the liturgy, but it's also incredibly informal. So we invite you to relax, take care of yourself, enjoy your meal once we bless it. And then we will enjoy being together, eating and talking a little bit about what Maundy Thursday means. And then we'll close out with one final ritual, the stripping of the altar. And I'm going to put David Perkins on the spot to read one of our Psalms later in the evening. <laughs> so. Okay, so I, I won't drink my wine till after I read. <laughs> it's at the end of the, I, it, it's Psalm 22. It should be pretty straightforward. Definitely drink your wine, but <laughs> I'll put you on the spot in a little bit. And another reminder tomorrow, you know, the church has been open really throughout Lent, and we've had the Stations of the Cross up, you will be able to come to the church and enjoy Stations of the Cross. And tomorrow, we will be sending out a link with an audio and a video of Stations of the Cross so that you can experience it. You can either listen to it or you can listen to it and actually see images of the crosses and the stations that are present in the church. Yeah, um, we, we've got all the pieces and parts. We're just finishing up, making sure it's ready for all of you, but we will share that. So whether you're near or far, you can participate. And if you do come in person to the church, at the top of each hour, we will be reading scripture. Meg is going to be reading scripture at noon, noon o'clock and one o'clock. <laughs> I'll be reading scripture at two o'clock and three o'clock. And then we will have a five o'clock Holy Friday service. So there are many ways to focus on what Holy Friday means. During the five o'clock service tomorrow, we will be focusing on the seven final words of Christ. There are no, we're not having any observances on Saturday itself. There will again then be a 6 a.m. sunrise service on Easter morning. That is going to be at the cul-de-sac at the end of Presidential Road. If there's anybody who really doesn't know where that is, you drive up Tin Mine Road and take a left once you get to the end of Tin Mine Road. And at the very end of that road is the cul-de-sac. If you are coming in person to that service, we do ask that you park before you get to the cul-de-sac or drop off anyone who needs to be dropped off and then turn around and try to park only on one side. And if you're coming and you have to drop off, please try to come just a few minutes early so that we can start on time and we don't have cars driving through the middle of the service. That would be lovely. We know that's probably gonna happen anyway, but we'll do our best to try to mitigate it. And then we have our traditional 1030 service and that will be entirely on Zoom. We will, well, not entirely. You can come in person to the sanctuary, but it will be on Zoom and it will be live streaming to Facebook like our services always are. So those are my announcements for the rest of the week. That was everybody's chance if you needed food or drink or a bowl of water, or if you wanted to light a candle so that you can participate with us in the, um, stripping of the altar, you have the pieces and parts to go ahead and do that. 
but we will share it with you. We, we did, we stripped the altar at the church and I'm gonna do it here at home as well. So you'll have a way to participate. Even if you don't have the elements at your house, they're, we're, they're being offered to you. So let us presume that we now have everybody that plans to be here. And we're going to start our evening with the symbolic act of washing our hands. So, and we've got somebody else coming in just now. I'm going to, anybody that wants to can focus on, I'm gonna put my hands over a bowl of water and we're going to start by centering ourselves with a flute duet from Jeanette Heidman or one of her flute solos. So let's listen to the flute and then that's your final pan to get your water ready if you need to. And as ever, we thank Jeanette for the gifts of music that she has been sharing with us during the season. And now we're going to read scripture. We're going to read from John 13, and I'm gonna treat you all like your cocktails and Christian conversations guests. And we're gonna put the scripture up on the screen for everybody. And I would love to have some volunteer readers. I believe there are a total of four pages to the scripture. Would anybody like to start us out and read for us? I will. Thank you, Sandy. Don't, don't get me if I don't say it right though. <laughs> now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah, son of Simon Is Iscariot. Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share, share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer for you will look for me and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, and you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Thank you so much for your improv reading, Sandy. That was lovely. You're welcome. And much, much appreciated. So we're now going to have the ritual of washing and blessing our hands prior to blessing our meal. And so if you have anybody with you, I'm inviting you to dip your finger in water momentarily. I'm going to we're gonna put up some text on the screen just so you can listen to this. And while I'm saying these words, please go ahead, dip your finger in water. If you're alone, place, you know, trace a symbol on your own hand. And if you're with someone else, we're asking you to bless each other. So while I read this blessing and this commissioning that's adapted from St. Teresa of Avila, please go ahead and bless each other or receive the blessing that you convey upon yourself that we are commissioning you with. And so Christ has no body now on earth, but yours, no hands, but yours, no feet, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which to look out God's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless now. So I'm hoping that all of you are giving each other that blessing right now. Thank you. You want to come closer so we can see? I'm blessing my sister. And then my sister's going to take the water in and she's going to bless Chris. We're a two-room household today. You know, you guys are welcome to unmute and just, you know, share for a moment if you wish also. She looks like your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Family oh. resemblance, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I thank you for that. <laughs> All right. And now we're going to bless the elements of dinner. 
So I'm going to put up a blessing on the screen. Chris is going to put up a blessing on the screen. I'm God, okay, sorry, I jumped ahead apparently to the confession. We have a confession first and then a blessing. So this is a unison prayer of confession. And it's about what it's like to sit at this table and know that you may not meet the full expectations of Christ. Please do unmute for this confession and let's do this together. Surely, I would never be prepared to pray. Never mind you. Please understand that as we gather for the meal this evening, we are gathering for the sacrament of communion. And so what we've just said is our confession, our opening up of our lives and ourselves in vulnerability to God's self, to love, and to the possibility of being changed and transformed by that love. We always want to make sure everyone knows that everyone is welcome to the table of communion. There are no barriers. There are no requirements. All people are welcome to this table. And though traditionally the elements are wine and bread, which I do have here this evening, it also includes the soup that the deacons so kindly made and passed out to many of you or whatever beverage you have on hand. So these are the elements that we will be blessing together this evening. First, I'm going to call down well, the, the blessing will call down God's presence upon these elements. So now we're going to put up that blessing. And I'll read the Hebrew as best I can. And I'm going to ask all of you to respond with the English that comes after it. Zahu besari ha'natun ba'akem asuchen le zikharon li. This is my body, given for you. Do this in memory of me. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Bore Peri Ha'ach Gafen. I'm going to have to ask forgiveness for my pronunciation. Please respond. And so now your meal has been blessed and <laughs> you might want to mute again and feel free to go ahead and uh, begin to let's give each other a chance to at least sample the food while it's hot <laughs> and then we'll we'll begin to chat can I say that while we're doing this I have two sparrows eating as well right here from the bird feeder um, while we're having soup, so. The whole world is feasting and the whole world is <laughs> gathering for its nourishment one way or another. Whoever made the chicken soup, it's absolutely delicious. And the lentil and the bread. You're yes, welcome. Sue, thank you. Thank you for making that great chicken soup. You're very welcome. I'm glad you enjoy it. Very generous portion though. <laughs> well, you're a growing girl. Uh -huh. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's good for you. There's the, that's, that's health food. Enjoy. So we are allowed to have seconds, right, Sue? 
Absolutely. I've got some in the freezer. You betcha. It's wonderful to be able to eat together on this day and to be able to, I saw um, Cindy Gilmer for the first time in person today, which was fabulous. And I saw Meg, which is wonderful. And then was able to meet Kathy, Reverend Gail's sister. She does exist. <laughs> Where did the bread come from? It came from the old village bakery on CV Street. And they were, um, I called them the night before because Italian bread has a way of disappearing quickly. So um, they, they were, they were uh, they've, all, they've always produced good quality products. Well, it's delicious. Thank you. It's a, it's a good country bread. I'm glad you enjoy it. Very hearty. <laughs> so I'm going to quiz all of you guys while you're eating. You guys have asked me this question before, so I was wondering if anybody remembers the answer as to why this particular day is called Maundy Thursday. I looked it up. Can I say it? Sure. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> if I if I read it right this morning, I just went, "What is Maudie Thursday?" And it was the Last Supper, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's part of the Last Supper. Um, anybody have any thoughts about where the word Mondi comes from? Oh, I didn't pay attention to that. <laughs> well, no. I mean, oh. it, it's it's definitely the it's the Last Supper, which was Passover. Anybody, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm open to your thoughts. If anybody remembers from last year or past years when you quizzed me. <laughs> um, Mondi is a derivative of the word mandate. So let's dive into this. From the scripture that Sandy read for you, what mandate would you take, you know, what did you hear as the mandate that was given in that scripture? Treat each other with love. Right. Love one another. Yeah. The great commandment to love one another. That's why this day is called Monday Thursday. That's why it's so important to include that part of the reading in the passage that we focus on today, because the whole day liturgically in our, in our rituals, is named for that very command that was given to the followers of Christ. We also know that um, at the end of this meal, we're gonna start a vigil. People will be meditating on scripture um, different hours of the day and that this begins the period of time immediately following that gathering, you know, they go to the garden. Jesus asks his followers to stay awake. And he's there praying and, and struggling with the whole idea of what he believes is coming. He asks to be released from what is coming if possible. And then he immediately surrenders himself to the, God's will and, and what is likely to happen. But he comes back to his followers and they've fallen asleep. They can't stay awake with him. And so he's really alone in his struggles and he is weeping. And then eventually we know that Judas Iscariot, who we read about also in the scripture, will lead you know, those who are going to arrest Christ to the garden. He will kiss Christ as a symbol of who they're supposed to arrest and he will be taken away and the entire series of events his trial and torture 
his appearances eventually before the crowd that votes to have him executed are all coming in the next several hours. So we turn from this, the beauty of this gathering to very serious events. So just so you understand that after we're done with our meal, and we may wind the meal down for you, you guys can keep eating even after the this next part of the Monday, Thursday service continues, we will, at the end of the stripping of the altar, Chris will play some music, but I'm going to ask that everybody remain silent. If you have candles that you want to put out, you can put them out along with us, but we'll play you a little bit of music and then we're going to end the service. So we end the service on a solemn note. And we ask that you hold with real attention the, the focus of these events and what it means to walk into this kind of danger and imagine that if we are commanded to love each other, that we love each other into these places and to think about those who are experiencing them for themselves right now. And we'll continue this vigil and meditation as a community until tomorrow afternoon at the end of Stations of the Cross. And then we'll think about what it means, the emptiness, you know, the uh, absence of love in the world and how something really has to die for new things to come into place, into life in our own lives as well. So does anybody have any thoughts or anything you wanna add before we move to our next scripture? I, you know, I'm happy to have for this to be a conversation instead of a one-sided meditation. You're all full of good chicken soup and le good lentil yeah. soup. And you're quiet. I have a question. When yeah. you have your hour of vigil, yes. What, what part of the Bible? What are you supposed to be concentrating on? Does everybody have a different version or different things, words, or? No. What I'm going to send out. I'm going to send out some suggested scripture as soon as this meeting ends. And we're really inviting you to read through the scripture, sort of sit with the whole thing, but then choose a word, a phrase that you find meaningful and go ahead and meditate on that. And there's no right or wrong passage or word to, to focus on, but everybody will receive the same passage. It's fairly long, so you can, you know, take whatever part is important to you and just sit with it somehow in the hour that you've signed up for. You know, we're also, in, we're also encouraging people, to, if you're going to actively hold vigil with a word or a phrase or an idea, choose an activity or way of doing it that helps you be with it. You can do a coloring page, you can walk your dog in a, in a place where you could focus on it. You can sit and pray, you can knit. <laughs> uh, however you find a contemplative way to focus, please go ahead and do that. Does that help? Yeah, is it too late to sign up for times or do you have the times that are available? How can we just send it? We don't have to discuss right now, but send it to you for yeah just send, send me whatever time you'd like to do and um, what I've said is that even if there are two people on the same time slot generally people are doing it in their own homes I mean you're welcome to go to the church if you really want to sit in the church with the word for that period of time um, somebody will definitely occupy the church throughout the stations of the cross at hours from noon to three tomorrow but the remainder of the time choose wherever you are to meditate and you can choose the hour that works for you and we'll spread ourselves across that time. It'll be fine. So just go ahead and email me if there's a time you want. And But I'm sending the readings through the church email to everyone so that if people suddenly decide to focus on it, you can. Any other thoughts or questions? All right, well, then I'm going to put David on the spot. 
with <laughs> uh <-huh. There> he <laughs> is. And I was getting more soup. Sue said I was allowed to have it. <laughs> you are allowed. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let it cool off for just a minute while you read Psalm 22, some excerpts from it. We're going to put those up on the screen, David, if you'll read for us. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, I find no rest. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots from my garment. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. For, for, for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. Thank you. I'm assuming most of you recognize the words that begin that Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We will talk about that again tomorrow, but very often Christ drew upon the Psalms when he cried out from the cross. He drew on his faith tradition. He drew on traditional texts and scriptures and even songs to endure what he endured. Yeah. So let this Psalm set the tone for how we enter with Christ into this experience where we are holding vigil through someone's suffering and death. And now we're going to strip the altar. So I'm going to spin my computer just a little bit. I have a little altar here at home. We're going to strip the altar from the church first. And then if anybody has one at home, you're welcome to blow out your candles cover your cross as a symbolic act of entering the vigil time. We'll, we'll share with you first this stripping of the altar from the church. And ashes soil our hands. Read of market pride of nation. Holy Spirit, come walk with us tomorrow as we pray and struggle through the meshes of oppression. Take us by the hand and lead us. Lead us through the desert sands. Bring us
So brothers and sisters, I'm now going to strip the altar here in my home. I'm going to ask you to go in peace, holding the words of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Imagine our own Lord crying that out. Let that be where you begin your journey. It will lead you to Easter and to resurrection, but it goes to death first and to suffering. And it's real. It was real for him because it's real for us. And God is with us through everything. This love cannot be turned away. It will come to us in the deepest, hardest places of our lives, as well as the most joyful. I'm going to mute myself, but I wish you peace as I strip the altar and then Chris will begin the music and then we'll end the service. <laughs>